In our last episode, we visited the island of Canyon, where we met Hee Haw Harry and were educated by the locals about yacht safety. We tried the local rum punch and hiked a trail off the beaten path. We sailed to Tobago Cays, where we spent our days swimming with turtles and had a private beach dinner before we set sail to Petit Bahat to do a little diving. Hi, we're Brooke and Gary. A year ago, we traded the American dream for our dream. Welcome to One Life. Although we were having fun diving at Petit Bahat, we had a couple friends nearby that we decided to meet up with. So we motored the few miles over to Blue Lagoon and dropped the hook. We hadn't seen our friends on Wyro since Grenada, so we met up with them to do a quick sunset hike. Built in the 1790s by the British, Fort Duvernay rests atop a volcanic plug that rises to 195 feet above sea level. There are 255 steps to the top that curl around the mountain. A couple cannon and mortar batteries remain at the summit. From the top, it is easy to see how having guns up here was crucial to the defense of the British settlement on St. Vincent. We took in the epic views and pondered what it would be like to have cannons fired at One Life as we sailed into a new island. Pretty crazy to think about. the hike, we quickly went home to change to meet up with Wyro, Too Short, and Sertia for pizza and drinks at the local pub. The following morning, we got off to a late start. We wanted to rent a car to hike Souffre, but first we had to stop at the police station. So we are currently in the police station where we have to get our driver's license to be able to rent a car in St. Vincent. And it's a pretty cool building actually, but only two people are allowed in there at a time because of COVID. So I'm hanging out up here. Got my driver's license. No test, just hand him a hundred bucks. Once Gary had his license, we headed to pick up the car and get back to the boat so we could hike the next day. Morning. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go hike a volcano. We woke up super early, picked up our friend Lara, and took a two hour car ride to, as the locals like to call it, the Souf. This volcano rises almost 1200 meters above sea level, so we wanted to give ourselves plenty of time to get to the top. St. Vincent's Souffre volcano last erupted in 1979. The soup started out on a well-maintained path covered with bamboo and lots of greenery. It was quite amazing to see how resilient nature can be, despite the devastating activity which occurred just 40 years prior. But as we got closer to the crater rim, the green scenery changed into a rockier terrain with low-lying ferns and moss. As we approached the crater rim, the rain and wind decided to join us. 
and it's raining. Yay! <laughs> After a three hour hike to the top, we peeked over the edge of the crater and all we could see was nothing. <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine our disappointment when we couldn't see anything when we got to the top. We decided to have some snacks and see if the weather passed. And sure enough, after about a 30 minute wait, the cloud curtain gave way to the most spectacular sight. Unfortunately, due to weather, we were unable to capture the beauty of the crater by drone, but we did manage to get a short video before the cloud curtain closed upon us. down the trail, the weather subsided and Gary didn't waste a single second getting the drone in the air. Unfortunately, the crater was still too cloudy and windy for drone footage, but we did capture the vast beauty of the green hillside. weather, the hike was absolutely amazing. We are so, so thankful we were able to hike this volcano. Just about done with the volcano hike. It was pretty epic. We would have never guessed this very volcano would be closed to the public a month later due to volcanic activity, including smoke and lava flow inside the crater. We send nothing but good vibes to the people of St. Vincent as researchers continue to monitor and evaluate the severity of their recent activity in the Souf. Morning, afternoon actually. Brooks left all morning. So we're just leaving now. It's afternoon. Gary wanted to die for his upcoming birthday, so Sersha, Wyro, and Too Short all pulled anchor and we headed to the island of Beckway. We arrived in Beckway and the next morning it was time to party. Good morning! It's Gary's birthday, I'm on live! So I made him a little birthday party. First on the list of activities. Well, <laughs> a birthday shot. Which is right here, activity number... Activity number four. We're going out of order today. That's good rum. What was that? That rum was 5 EC, which is $2 <laughs> in US. Good rum. Good rum. <laughs> rum is cheaper than water, it's crazy. After Gary's morning brekkie shot, we loaded up our gear and headed to the local dive spots. Beckway is known for its colorful coral rock formations and it definitely did not disappoint.
Happy birthday! Yay! What shot number is this? Three. Yay! Three. We pre-gamed with two short and a couple shots before heading to the nearest bar to meet the rest of the crew. We spent the rest of the day drinking away and celebrating Captain Brownbeard. I think it's safe to say you can't go wrong with a birthday in Beckway. Six, I think. I think you've done six a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like eight for him. <laughs> Introducing, for the first time ever on YouTube, Gary's Man Bun. <laughs> and let's just say the fun escalated quickly. On our way to town, and Bo is our DJ. But before we made it into town to continue the celebration, we had one quick stop to make. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Rowan. Oh. Turn it over. Turn it over. Happy birthday! Happy it says birthday. my name, and it's got a bow. Thank you, Rowan. No. Luckily, our GoPro battery died before our evening shenanigans did. Last night, we had a lot of fun, and we actually feel pretty good today. So we're going diving, and there's a whole thing for days. Oh yeah, it's so cold right now, and it's rainy, but we'll be underwater. Diving. Yeah, we dove the uh, north wall moon hole today. The, the north side here is a pretty cool wall with lots of coral and fish and life, eels, mana shrimp. Moon Hole was founded by an American couple in the 1960s who purchased the western tip of Beckway and constructed a stone house under this jaw dropping natural arch. This eco-friendly off-grid community grew, and eventually a total of 17 homes were built. Most of the property is now in disrepair, 
but the uniqueness of this landmark is still just as inspiring. After a few days of fun, it was time to get our lives back in order to prepare for our sail to St. Lucia. The first thing on our to-do list was to head to the hospital to get our COVID test. To be granted entry into St. Lucia, we had to submit our COVID tests online prior to arrival. Marie Soroka, you are negative. Woohoo! Guess it means we don't have COVID. We also wanted to vote before we left, so we set off to find a fax machine to send our ballots. Finding a fax machine is tougher than you think, but after a couple failed attempts, we met the nicest business who was willing to do it for us. I voted. I don't get a sticker though. Next stop, customs and immigration. In preparation for our passage to St. Lucia, we have to check out of Beckway. So sometimes it's an easy process and sometimes it's a little bit lengthy, so we'll see how this goes. Once we received all our necessary paperwork from Beckway, we headed back to the boat. The next day, we finished our prep work. Since we had been diving, we had all our gear out, so Gary had to put all our tanks below deck and put our scuba compressor back in the storage to clear the deck. Pairing the boat for a long passage takes us a full day. Whenever we are doing an overnight sail, we put our jack lines out as a safety precaution. This allows us to clip our safety harnesses to the jack lines in the event one of us needs to go on deck. We are headed to town to get the rest of the stuff done that we need before our passage to St. Lucia. On our way to town, we ran by our friends to say goodbye. First, Wyro. Morning! Next stop, too short. Hello! I'll see you in St. Lucia! Uh -oh. And as we were headed to say so long to Sertia, we found Bo paddling their dinghy so we tied a line to give them a tow back to their boat. <laughs> we were coming over to see you anyway. <laughs> Next stop was the fuel station. We wanted to get a couple gallons of gas and diesel just in case we had any issues along the way. Always more work. Of course, the fuel station is a bit of a walk from the dock. But hey, this is how we get our exercise. We got our fuel and we moved to another dock so we could get some groceries. This life isn't easy. <laughs> it's the car locked. <laughs> On our way to pick up a few groceries, we stopped by the hardware store for a new lock for our dinghy. We're a little worried that when we get to St. Lucia, we might have to quarantine. Um, even though we did our PCR test and followed their protocol, things are changing daily. So we're gonna stock up on some fresh food before we leave. We never know what will happen when we enter a new country. So we always prepare as much as we can before we leave. Goodbye, Beckway. Next stop, St. Lucia. So we've had this padlock on our outboard, keeping it locked to the dinghy, on here for a couple months now. And it started to rust pretty bad. And I went to get it off and it wouldn't come out. So I've been soaking it in PB blaster for a few days and that didn't work and the key just snapped off inside of it. So now that the key snapped off inside of it, there's really no other option. So it's time to angle grind it. Well, got that taken care of. So a lot of times we will just tow our dinghy if we're going on a short sail, but tonight we're gonna to sail all the way up to St. Lucia, which is about 70 miles. Step one, disconnect the fuel line, which I had already done because I was cutting the lock off. Step two. Step three, attach the engine hoist to the harness on the engine. Step four, the muscle hoists the engine up.
step five, put the outboard on the bracket and secure it. Step six. Step seven, monkey your way up onto the boat. Step eight, hoist the dinghy. Step nine or 10, I really don't know. It's just way too many steps. Secure the lines and make it nice and neat. One more very important step that we have forgotten once and it was almost a disaster. Do you remember what it is? Pull the plug on the dinghy. <laughs> yeah, if you don't remember to pull that drain plug and it rains a lot, you're gonna have a lot of weight hanging off your davits and your dinghy might just go crash. <laughs> well, Gary has been doing everything above on the deck, getting the boat ready. I've been down here trying to figure out if we we're approved to get into St. Lucia. I sent our test results back to them along with all of our boat paperwork and I'm still waiting to hear back from them. So I just shot them another email asking if our entry is approved. So hopefully we'll hear back soon. We're in back way. And we prepped all day, and I think we're finally ready to pull the anchor and head to St. Lucia tonight. So we're checked out and cleared out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, approved for arrival into St. Lucia. So we're gonna overnight sail up to St. Lucia tonight. It's about 70 nautical miles. So it should take us about 12 hours, we think. The winds are supposed to be pretty stiff. Uh, we think it's going to be a pretty salty sail, so yeah, hopefully it won't be <laughs> won't be too much for us tonight. Um, but we're hoping for a morning arrival into St. Lucia, get checked into customs without any issues, and then hopefully go explore. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about leaving St. Vincent and the Grenadines? I'm ready to go. Ready to go? I'm ready to move on. Ready for something new. Yeah. All right, ready to pull anchor? All right, it's time to go. We will chat when we get to St. Lucia. Or maybe on the way to <laughs> Yeah, if it's not too crazy. Yeah. If it's not too crazy, we might actually pick up a camera. <laughs>